Check these fat bastards out. These are BRC aluminum connecting rods. Small journal or small block Chevy. Brooks BRC is Brooks Racing Components. I don't think they're in business anymore. These are some new old stock from back in the day. These are the rods you want to use if you're planning on making some serious fucking steam. Gonna put a power adder on your shit. ain't cheap though but all your baddest engines out there look inside a top fuel Hemi they got aluminum rods top alcohol funny car engines aluminum rods pro mod engines aluminum rods so if you got if you're making thousands of fucking horsepower, you probably got aluminum rods in your engine. They they don't last forever though. They have a they have a life to them. How many cycles you can get out of them? But if you're not running them at ten thousand horsepower, they'll last longer than most people would think. You throw a set of these in a bracket race engine and run them for a fucking decade. Be just fine. Seen it done. I had a 302 I built years ago. It had Bill Miller aluminum rods in it. They had a factory small journal forge crank. It was a 68 MO block. That's what I started with. But the Bill Miller rods looked about like these BRCs here. That fucking engine, it revs so fast, so quick. I had a shift light set at 9,500. But by the time you grab that fucking shifter and go to shift that son of a bitch, it done went, it's 9,800. Hell, it went 10,000 RPM more than a few occasions. It never blew up. Couldn't blow that fucking engine up. You'd float the valves. Something else would fuck up before the bottom end would ever come apart. But I ran that engine for a while. And it never blew up. Revved the shit out of it. And it was about... It was a 60 over 302. So what it actually was... These are they're small journal rods, and these are 355. These are going in a 355 small block Chevy. I'm going to use these dirt modified heads I have. They came off a 630 horse. 358 small block Chevy. I'm going to use those heads. 
these rods and pistons. I got a Moldex Joe Reith prepared crankshaft 4340 steel. It's like 42 pound crank. I'm gonna turn this fucker up about 9,000 RPM. Put about a, I think that's two, 284, 288 at 50, solid roller, a 675, 645 lift, 106 lobe separation. And then run them big ported fucking heads I got. These domes and those heads it should have about 14 and a half to one compression. These are gas ported. These are BRC pistons. They're gas ported. You got the skinny rings and shit. Pretty fucking nice pistons. But that'll yield about 14 and a half to one compression ratio. It's be strictly race fuel. Or I might run it on alcohol. I ain't made up my mind yet. Just gonna make. I'm pretty much gonna duplicate that 630 horse small block them heads came off of. Except I think that it had steel rods. These are good shit. They're fucking dialed. down in there. Thick as a motherfucker. BRC 61. Fucking rod bolts are bomb proof. They're like L-19s or some shit. These fucking rides will take thousands of horsepower. Way, way, way more than I'm gonna put on it. But I can rev that son of a bitch and not worry about kicking a rod out the old pan. fucking crankshaft it goes with this shit's top notch also it's a 4340 Moldex prepped by Joe Reith himself the legendary Joe Reith Passed away about 2013. But anybody old school knows that name. Reith Automotive. It used to be a funny car. Jim Dunn. Joe Reith. Raced a top fuel funny car back in the day. Reith Automotive. Out of Southern California. But he was probably the best crank guy to ever fucking live. Welding stroker cranks and shit back in the 50s and shit, the 60s. Built a lot of top fuel dragster engines back in the day. But 
He was the man. Joe Reese. He was pretty old when he passed away. I think he was about 78 years old. So he did the shit for a long time. These are some bad boys here. I don't have the crankshaft right here at the moment. But it's it's all matching. All this shit goes together. It's all balanced together. RPMs will be limited by your fucking valve train with this shit. Pretty good shit. Gas ported pistons, that's an old school trick. Drill these holes in the top of the piston here and the, the pressure pushes down on the rings pushes the ring out towards the cylinder wall get a better seal but they use these fucking things in all the baddest engines Plan on making thousands of fucking horsepower. That's what you're gonna need. Also got a turbo small block. Currently building. Slowly gathering the shit forward, but I ain't in no hurry because it's gonna make more power than any of my cars will handle right now, so. It would just sit, but I'm working on that too, but I'm going to use the same kind of rods in that turbo engine. And I'm building a 327 and it's also going to run aluminum rods. Cause I'm gonna rev it to the fucking moon. It's getting super bottom of the page camshaft, big compression. I'm gonna use some ported 292 turbo heads on it. And see how much power I can get out of that old dinosaur shit. idea this kind of shit was common in some circles it's not revolutionary I'm not the first person to ever lay hands on this kind of shit it's been around for a long fucking time back in the 70s modified production class cars using small cubic inch engines turning serious RPMs most of them made well over 600 horsepower back then so shit ain't nothing new A, a super victor intake and a thousand CFM carb. I might try a dominator on it and just see how it acts. There you go, your BRC aluminum connecting rods for small block Chevy.